Welcome back to a tailor's approach to cloth sewing in Blender. This is part 4, Assembly and Styling. Originally the title was supposed to be Assembly and Adjusting, but I just realized that I should be making adjustments in the previous part, part 3, instead of in here. If you've made it this far, I'm glad for you because all those things we did earlier are actually the heavy lifting. This part and next one are actually the fun part because uh, this is where you can finally see the result of your hard work and see the magic forms itself out. Okay, so let's do this. First, you need to you need to make sure everything has a clean one. Okay, this is the scene that we left off. Okay, we got the body back, the body front, the collar and arm and cuff. So the first thing you need to make sure is everything has a clean one scale. Let's check it out. Okay, the body has a clean one scale, this one. And the collar has a clean scale as well the arm and cuff it's clean as well so that checks out so now let's get both the front and the back uh, and bring it up uh, okay first we need to rotate it let's turn it off turn on the model there she is and now we have to turn this up first so what I'm gonna do is that uh, I think I'm just gonna make a duplicate uh, for all this, you know. So we've got a clean thing. Let's make another collection. Uh, process fabric probably, and yeah, and let's move all these uh, duplicates to the new collections where is it ah, there it is so we can just hide it and anyway you can just uncheck all this and let's rename them actually so they don't have this tail number so let's call this uh, something like with a prefix of shirt uh, this one too, shirt, color, shirt, arm and cuff, okay, uh, okay, hang on, I got it wrong, the shirt should be the prefix, not the suffix, so we've got these four nice uh, duplicates now let's do the body first and we're just gonna rotate it 90 degrees sorry ah uh, i think this is a good time to turn on uh, my shortcut okay now let's move it up so now you might be wondering where should i Put this fabric right I mean like is it here is it something tops or something lower uh, so actually this is the thing okay we would normally think that it should be something like this you know like the armhole so the armhole of the shirt corresponds to the actual arm of the model but actually it's best to put it so that the waist of the cloth objects are on level with the waist measurements. So let's turn on our measurements. Okay, there it is. That's our measurements. This is the waist measurements. So we should be moving it up much, much farther. Okay, something like that. Okay. okay, let's see if I round it up. Uh, okay, 
that looks that looks pretty close and that's okay I like a round number so okay with that we have uh, pull it up so okay now what we need to do is actually now the even though that vertically the mesh is already in place but uh, we still need to pull it out because now it's just piercing through the model's uh, mesh so okay we just have to the front one we go we move it forward forward and the back one we move it backward that's one way to do it but actually uh, believe it or not I like it I like this one better okay there's still uh, there it is I haven't uh, okay that's good now what I like to do is basically I like to keep them uh, the origin in this place so what I'm gonna do is basically uh, use edit mode we're gonna move them in edit mode okay so let's see the difference because if we move with normal G you will see that now the Y changes the Y transformation location these two will change and I don't know it's a personal uh, preference if you can if you want to do it uh, that's okay too but for me I'm just gonna mo move it with edit mode so okay and I'm just gonna move it forward something like give it a little bit of space okay something like okay 25 centimeters that's good so now if you notice that the transformation it's still zero for the Y so that's uh, just a little bit cleaner so I'm just gonna do it the same with this one and move it backwards something like okay that's just looking good 15 centimeters I think it's enough okay now they face they already placed in the right place and the next thing is uh, we're gonna check the face orientations because that's kind of important now nah, this one I'm talking about uh, the front uh, the front piece is actually already correct but uh, the back one doesn't it it shows the wrong part of the uh, mesh the face orientations of the mesh so what I'm gonna do uh, I'm just gonna enter the edit mode and select mesh and where is it mesh normals and flip okay now it's facing the correct the correct uh, way okay so the next we are actually just going to merge them we're going to join them so uh, okay we're just going to do that going to click the back one click the front one let's turn off the face orientations first okay like that and click object and join okay now we have one mesh for the body let's rename it just let just call it shirt body and that's cool now we're actually just going to stitch them uh, we're gonna stitch everything and but we're gonna leave the neck and armhole alone so we we're gonna stitch the shoulder and the sides only um, okay so you can do this two ways actually you can just use fill method you just click this edge and the corresponding opposite opposite edge and fill with a shortcut F and just click 
this edge and just keep pressing F until it fits, until it kind of ends. But you can also, uh, the other way to do it is actually to use bridge edge loops. So what I'm going to do is pick this edge and then this edge. So you have this line. You also, and then uh, pick this edge and then go this edge. So you have these two edges and just uh, right click bridge edge loops and voila you can just now delete only faces something like that uh, any way you want it uh, it doesn't really matter so yeah you just have to connect uh, the sides i i'm just gonna prefer the the bridge method right now because it's because it's now uh, faster and because we can do it for this one so yeah something like that yeah so okay go to object mode and now we can actually start uh turning on the cloth simulations on the physics uh, properties here and cloth so I'm not gonna be fancy with the settings the presets that blender provides are actually great already so I should I usually use cotton preset for this one with the shoe options down here on under shape this sewing turn on uh, However, as you will see, you still need to tweak a little bit about the settings because let's check it. Let's turn on, let's play the simulations. Okay, sorry. And yep, that looks, yeah, that looks okay. Okay. Yeah. I guess that looks okay but it's kind of you know it doesn't really look nice at all so yeah even like actually it's pretty bad <laughs> when you look into it uh, yeah that that doesn't look nice so okay so I'm, the thing is I'm just gonna uh, there's only four settings that uh, we need to tweak actually uh, it is the max force this max swing what is it max swing force yes this one and then the object collision distance and also the self collision uh, distance and the last the fourth it is up here the speed the speed multiplier uh, I have figured the default numbers for each of these settings I got them from simple trial and error so you two are free to play around with them however I'm not gonna do that trial and error here because I guess I'll just bore and annoy you to death so uh, but I will still try to explain what these settings are. Uh, okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'll, I'll set these settings to my default number. Uh, and then I'll try to explain them. I'm going to try to explain about the settings. Okay, so for the max force, what I'm going to set it to is 20. For the object collision it's five millimeters for the self collision it's a 2.5 millimeters and for the speed multiplier I'm just going to try 0.5 okay now so let's run the simulations with these default number 
And that's what we got. It's much better than the previous one. I guess it's it's cleaner, uh, but actually I still see a little bit of weird simulations around the breast. Uh, so I'm just gonna turn tune this down to 0.4, and let's see if it shapes better. Ah, yeah, that that looks better. Yeah, there's no weird. There's a little still bit of weird weird shapes but it's okay we can just uh, deal with, deal with it later okay that's looking good anyway we're just gonna for the entire simulations we're just going to run it to uh, frame 50 and okay now I think I'm just gonna explain a little bit about these four settings the first is the max sewing force. Okay, what it actually does, uh, if you set it to a default uh, zero, it actually means, it doesn't really mean zero force, but it means it gives an infinity amount of force. So here's the thing, uh, we're, we're gonna repeat the simulations. So you'll see that now we run the stimulations. You notice that the cloth will kind of snap with a uh, you know a neck breaking speed. Uh, it doesn't really bad right now because because uh, if you see the cloth is still in simple shapes, so it doesn't really matter that much. But you will notice later as you add the arm and the collar and then the cuff this is gonna be a lot more important so uh, yeah however if I set it um, the other way around if I set it really low with something like one what's gonna happen is that the cloth will be you know it does it's not gonna even pull itself properly so yes even if we set it to something like Let's give it two. It still doesn't stitch properly. Get it five probably. And it still doesn't do the job. So I found that maybe 10. Let's do 10. And it already starts to work. But it's still, you will see this, you still see this, you know, overlapping thing around the shoulders. So it means that it's not enough, 10. So let's turn 20, turn it back to 20. And yeah, that's all about the max force. Uh, next, uh, object collision distance. And if you set it to its default, uh, that is uh, 0.015, meaning that it's around 15 millimeters or 1.5 it's actually be okay if you run the simulations it yeah it will look okay but uh, you will notice that okay let's play the simulations first um, yeah okay that that may be enough uh, that you will notice that it's kind of bulky if you see from the arm here, the armhole, you will see that there's a lot of gap between the model and then the the cloth. That's uh, yeah, that's that's kind of kind of bad. I mean, like it looks like uh, you know as if the model is kind of a trained bodybuilder. So yeah. However, if I set it too low, either something like. The lowest point is actually one millimeter, like 0 0.001. You cannot go lower than this. So if I try it now, what's gonna happen is that it will pierce through the skin, as you can see from the breast. And yeah, that's that's not what we want to actually. 
Okay, it's slowly going out, but you know, it's, it, yeah, it's bad. So that's about object collision. So I found that five millimeters is kind of safe distance. So I'm just gonna set it that way. Uh, and then self collision. Self collision, uh, if you set it back to the same uh, default value that is 1.5 centimeters, if I run the simulations, uh, okay, let's see what's happened. First of all, it's, uh, it's kind of slower, much, much slower. And yeah, I mean, like, it, it looks like crazy. <laughs> um, and the reason is that, remember that our mesh is divide, divided into centimeters, right? And each face has one centimeter in its length and width. So if our self collision is set to uh, 1.5 centimeters, the collision size is now is actually bigger than the actual individual face. And that's why it goes crazy. However, if, if we do the opposite and set it to its lowest, uh, let's see what's gonna happen. And yeah, I mean, like it, it looks great for now. You're not gonna see anything wrong with way too low distance because well it's still simple just like what i did with uh, max sewing for force you will see it uh, especially uh, clearer when we are, we are doing the color because this self collision only is seenable the problem of uh you know self collision is only seenable with you know like meshes that has that have uh, overlapping meshes like colors and yeah i mean like it i uh, i will explain it later when we do the color because that's a much clearer uh, example however we're just going to bring it back to 2.5 and yeah the last is actually the speed multiplier. It's actually the first one. And just like its name suggests, it's a multiplier. It determines the speed of the simulations. So from what I can observe, it kind of correlates well with the max force below. As you'll see, these two numbers are the only ones, uh, actually later, are the only ones that I'm going to tweak more while the collisions are usually unchanged so yeah with these correct numbers uh okay let, okay let's give an example of one with this uh yeah that's now you see the problem when you i mean like when you keep the speed multiplier high one the simulation is going to be really fast that it pierces the skin. Uh, so yes, I mean like if we uh, slow it down, it has less chance of breaking, of going through the skin. So yeah, that's something. But with even with 0.5, we still see that some of it, the breast area is still kind of a uh, trapped so yeah i just turn it four run it again and yeah it's looking nice let's wait until uh frame 50. okay a little bit more and stop now if you actually turn off the wireframe and then let's turn off the measurements and then let's add subdivision well yeah that's looking good 
isn't it? I mean, like, you just got yourself a <laughs> a sleeveless t-shirt, basically. And... Yeah. Wait a minute. Let's... Something is kind of odd. What is the collision? Yeah. I think I do a little bit of mistake because remember that I bring in the Eleanor uh, model and the Eleanor still has a collision in it so yeah I mean like that's why the breast is kind of a little bit looking too big so I'm just gonna turn off the collision and bring back the, uh, the Sonoya mesh and we're just gonna rerun the simulation okay now that looks more natural <laughs> okay let's wait until 50 and stop well yes if we turn on the subdivision you'll see a nice looking sleeveless t-shirts right now okay we're gonna attach we're now gonna attach the arm to the body mesh but first uh let's turn off the cloth subdivision and then kind of uh hide it okay now first we're gonna we're gonna not the color let's hide it too and the first thing that we're gonna do is actually to separate the arm and then the cuff okay now just select the cuff and then control P sorry uh, what's the oh, P just P not control P selection and now we have two we can just rename it right now just shirt arm and shirt cuff right and yeah so now we're just gonna bring it up to the body mesh so the easiest way to do it is actually to just reuse the things that we already have and because the arm is going to be here, it's going to be in arm, and we already have, you know, this measurements, we can actually use it uh, with 3D cursor, uh, cursor to select it, and let's hide it again, and click the arm mesh, and shift S, selection to cursor and there we go it's going up to the right place okay i think we just have to rotate it downwards and something like that okay i'll i think i'm just gonna put it a nice round number that's that's my thing i just i just like it when it's round number so now we actually have a little bit of problem because uh, now you may realize that unlike the body mesh that has a separate front and back meshes, uh, the arm is kind of made of one mesh. So yeah, so how how do we, you know, how do we connect these edges to those edges right so this is actually what i'm gonna do so just enter the edit mode uh select all and since our 3d cursor is already there so we can use just change the setting to 3d cursor and rotate it uh, along the local transformation and transform orientations and 
we can just rotate it downwards that's okay if it pierces the skin now and set the angle to 30 and we're going to deselect five of these right so we got a nice half of the curve uh, of the mesh and we're gonna snap the 3d cursor to this point right and we're just going to uh, rotate it again along the x-axis until we got a 60 degree minus 60 degrees angle and yeah now if you notice that this uh sorry this side these edges are now opposite with these edges we cannot select it because it's still mirrored so and that's the point that's what we are gonna do so yeah so we just have to address these uh, you know penetrating thing so what happens if I bring it up a little bit that doesn't look better either so uh, I probably just have to leave it there for now I think uh, so yeah next uh, we're gonna put slits on the back of the arm yeah so remember that uh, we put an extra two centimeters at each side of the cuff so if you see here the cuff has 12 edges uh, meanwhile our arm only have 10 right so there's an extra two centimeters uh, so that extra two centimeters is actually going to be attached to these flaps okay that is we're going to extrude from the slits on the back of the arm so how do we do it so first uh, we have to determine where the slits are uh, horizontally it will be in the middle and that's why I chose this five as the you know as the rotation angle and because this is where the slits gonna be on these edges uh, however vertically how long it's gonna be well it's gonna be a half of the forearm length our forearm length as of right now has a 24 so if you have like uh, 20 it will be 10 just divided by 2 so not but in my case I have a 24 centimeters long so I'm just gonna divide by 2 to get a half and that's gonna be 12 yeah uh, so let's do that let's check the slits okay now 12 edges next we just gonna separate these edges you can use it where you can use the rip vertices uh, or you can use this shortcut at a fee and that's it you can just press escape now what's next okay that's way too close so I'm just gonna move it a little bit okay sorry let's hide the mesh I'm just gonna move it a little bit inside so that we can see uh, the separations and yeah now we're just going to build the flap okay just have to select uh, 12 edges again and we can extrude them along the y-axis and set it to two centimeters okay we're going to give it a little bit of a 
edge loops so that it remains so each face remains uh, to have you know one centimeters uh, dimension and yeah the next is that I'm gonna use the same uh, method again we use local and 3d cursor snap it to here so that we can uh, accurately rotate this thing along the sorry hang on a minute local that seems correct so yep along the x axis and just gonna flip you're just gonna rotate it something like uh 90 if it's 90 it's it, it's it's way too it's gonna be it's gonna overlap so i'm just gonna give it a little bit uh room something like uh, 85 i guess and yeah that's looking good so that we maybe maybe 80 right something like that so that we still can see uh clearly and yeah i think that's it so we're gonna do the same with the uh the inside part and we have 12 edges and we're going to extrude them okay turn off the uh magnet snapping so we extrude ah oh shit Hmm. Ah. Should I think? Let's, let's yeah. Let's undo all that. Uh, I kind of forget that we have to break the mirror first. So yeah, we have to break the mirror. We have to apply the mirror first to do it because we just want uh, the slit to be on the back, not on the front. In the front so yeah we're just going to apply it the the mirror so but before that i'm just going to you know duplicate it so in case we need it later so yeah gonna apply it and i'm just gonna fast forward to what i just did uh because i'm not gonna have to explain it again Okay, let's extrude this again. Two centimeters. Make a loop cut. Okay, let's snap it to here. Okay, something like that. Okay, sorry. Local flap it eighty degrees and let's make this one okay set twelve extrude turn off this thing the snapping tool two centimeters and loop cut select all the faces this one snap it to this side and you can rotate it something like you know if it's 30 it's going to be too close so maybe 20 something like 20 and that's looking good okay so yeah so what the next thing is that we have to stitch this thing to get together again you know because this is uh, this is twelve centimeters, so this thing should be stitched back to there that edge. So, or actually the other way around probably. But this one, yeah, this one something like this merge less. But this one we stitch that to here. Same thing with this one, yeah. We also have to have to do it with the the inside part this one yep just have to stitch it stitch it back 
and yeah that's that's looking good now we just have to bridge these edges this sorry these edges to those edges okay we just bridge edge loop tools uh only faces and we've got our shut arm mesh and yeah we're just going to join this with the body uh where's the body that one and yeah this looks a little bit weird because the body is way too up but i guess that's okay um so before joining i'm just going to duplicate it again so we can safely attach these things and same goes with the body uh, okay we attach them and check okay just i'm just going to use a shortcut um the arm we select the arm first and then the body because we want the arm to join the body mesh not the other way around so control j and yeah that's that's it okay now we just have to stitch stitch these edges this one yeah this one to that one however if we try to use you know the bridge edge loop tools well that works uh, or you can I thought it's not gonna work but it works apparently so you can use that and yeah I'm just going to use bridge edge loop tools and yeah that being done I can just delete only faces and that's it we've we've got the body and the arm joined so now let's it is the time to run the simulation again uh, let's turn on this cloth and yep run it and yeah that's that looks good yeah you you actually just got yourself a nice long sleeve t-shirt basically <laughs> if that's all you want uh, if a long sleeve t-shirt is what you want well then this is it you can just go to the next part actually uh, let's see if with subdivision turn off the white and the wireframe and that's looking good yeah that's that's definitely definitely a a t-shirt long sleeve t-shirts okay let's turn on the light and yeah that's looking good okay let's do this yeah okay that's enough uh, however the biggest difference between a t-shirt and a shirt is that a shirt has an opening in its front piece where the buttons will be so that's what we're gonna do next we're going to make a slit the same one like we made with the arm but right now just gonna do it with this along these middle uh, edges this one the middle edges we're just going to put slits in there and then we're going to extrude them to make the same flaps okay mm. but first actually we have to turn on hey we have to apply the mirror first actually because okay because we cannot really do it if we still have mirror modifier so okay we just okay turn it back okay 
let's turn off the cloth simulation and uh, just to be sure just you know duplicate it just to be safe and hide it and now we can safely apply the mirror modifier and this is what I'm gonna do it's actually quite simple okay first you have to get okay I think the first thing that we need is to isolate the front part we don't we don't really need to see the rest so we can hide all of them and yeah now we can focus with the front piece okay let's select the these edges and run it along to the bottom let's use the vertex rip vertices uh, shortcut V and we can just release it with escape and yeah we can just move now yeah it's ripped apart I can see that but we don't have to move it right now uh, okay so okay so here's the thing this one thing that I want to talk about and it's all about button a button on shirts this is actually the thing that I just figured out the thing that I completely had no idea about before and it's about the left and right buttons you see I'm a man and I have a lot of shirts naturally and all of them have the buttons on their right side so I assume that it's the same case with shirts for women but it but it apparently is not the case most shirts for women apparently have the buttons on their left side so the buttons is in the left in here it's right and from our perspective it is right but if we turn this like that it's on the left and yeah women uh, shirts for women have button on this side of the mesh um, not all but most of them like the ones you would find in stores however if you happen to make them in the tailor the tailor can indeed make the buttons on the right side I mean that's kind of important because it, it just blew my mind because why I mean unless you're left-handed it's just an illogical choice to have the buttons on the left side however uh, if you're making a shirt for men then it's no problem at all because we all know that the buttons are always on the right side okay uh, however for this demonstration I'm just going to I'm just going to make the buttons on the left merely because it's the standard as of right now uh, so if you're making the buttons on the right side uh, it's gonna be okay because the process is it identical it's just flip so yeah let's do this the first thing uh, you're gonna have to hide it so that it's easier for us to see uh, there's one face left behind okay so we're just going to select these edges now okay now because the buttons are on the left side so it is the right side that is gonna be in uh, the front so we're gonna have uh, yeah we're gonna select the edges and we're going to extrude them uh, two centimeters to, to the right side give it a loop cut and then we're gonna select three faces uh, you, we're gonna use a uh, 3d cursor gonna stamp it there and this one tiny face that we haven't selected 
and we're going to rotate it forward right okay forgot this one something like this and something like 15 degrees is fine okay now that's actually done we just we just have now created these the flaps and now we just have to make it on the other side okay now okay i think same trick we're just going to hide all of them because we're not going to use uh, the back and the arm for this one so i'm just going to hide all this and hi now we got only the left uh, side okay now we just same just going to select all and then extrude to the left two centimeters get a nice loop cut and we're going to select these three columns of uh, faces and I'm gonna put it there and now instead of going forward we're going to rotate this uh, backwards and something like that and if we unhide it you can see the effects now that's that's what I'm talking about Close it forward origin now so you see this this is the right side and they are in the front of the left side right and yeah i think we've done it and yeah now actually we're going to determine now we've got the flaps so the flaps are actually if if you're wondering what is the flap, it's basically this. The flaps are this part in the middle. You will see that uh, there's this a uh, thicker uh, folded. It's some many times it's kind of folded part. Let's get a better image. This one. Uh, there's this uh, in the middle. You will see that it's kind of a separate piece of uh, fabric. And that's what I'm talking about uh, when I when I reference flaps of the middle of the front piece. And the thing that we're gonna do is actually determine where the buttons will be. So so okay, this is the, the formula. The first button, uh, the, the button that is called the first, the first button, is actually on the collar. So, uh, the button that starts in the body mesh is actually the second button. And, okay, with, okay, that's kind of uh, important. So, this, this second button is usually uh, 7 centimeters below the neckline. This, this line, yeah. So yeah i'm just gonna measure it seven centimeters so it's one okay first you're just going to hide the the last uh column of faces including the back one and just gonna hide it for now so that we can see it better so we're just going to count uh seven one two three four five six seven this is where the the second button will be so what i'm gonna do is extrude the vertex and just place it on the opposite uh vertex and yeah that's the second button now uh we're going to do with the rest of the buttons and here's the thing, uh, if the model is uh, rather tall, the subsequent button's gap is going to be 8 centimeters. 
if the model is rather short, the gap will be better at 7 centimeters. In my case, uh, my model is kind of tall. I mean, she's like she's like uh, 172 centimeters. So that's roughly around 5 feet 10 inches. So that's tall. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going with the 8 centimeters gap. Okay. Okay, let's count it again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We're just going to extrude them. Oh, to do that, you actually have to turn on the snapping tool up, uh, up here. And yeah, let's count it again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oh, that's, that's coincidence. Sorry. Snapping tool. Yeah, that's kind of coincidence. <laughs> it lies right on the uh, the bus line. Okay, let's con continue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We got eight. Snap it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Snap it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Snap it. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Now, uh, in Soto, you would have eight, uh, no, seven, uh, seven of these edges, if you count it, um, okay. You're going to end up with uh, seven of these button stitchings, see, edges, seven. And yeah, next we're just going to merge them because remember that we snap them, but it's still not, you know, merged. So that's what I'm going to do. Just select with the X-ray mode turned on. Just going to select all of them and merge uh, by distance. And as you can see, we removed uh, seven vertices. So now, if we try to, where is it? Okay, where is it? Okay, this one. No, it's still not this one. If we try to move them, you will see that now it's kind of merged into one uh, vertex, and that's what we want. That's that's why it's called stitchings. So. Yeah, the next we're actually going to do the same thing with the left and the right side of this uh, thing, right? So this is what we do. So we're going to do it as well with this. Yeah, we're just going to do with this one and this one and yeah so here's the trick to save a little bit of time because um, you don't want to you know recalculate everything from scratch so what I'm gonna do is first again I think I'm just going to hide all of them yep something like that so it's easier for us to see it and first we are going to determine to select these edges with x-ray mode on and then go back to vertex mode and now you can see uh, the previous position of the stitch right so what i'm gonna do is actually yeah select the one on the right just have to select what is next vertex and yeah, that's looking good. And hang on a minute. Okay, that's looking good. Now 
we just have to deselect the the ones on the left with control and voila we just selected all and yeah wait one minute i think yeah okay just checking in now what we are gonna do is extrude them but now using active element so here's what it's gonna do if we try to with the snapping tool on extrude and we snap it to its opposite you'll see that the ones uh, on the top they kind of uh, snap to the right uh, vertex same thing with this and that's that's it that's how to make it a little bit faster and you can just merge it something like that merge by distance and we just remove uh, seven vertices and yeah okay let's check it in okay now we just have to unhide all of them and yeah I think let's see if I make a little bit mistake hmm no hmm yeah Hang on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's looking good right now. And so this one should be there. Yeah, I think I made a little bit of mistake placing the these things because <laughs> sorry for that and I think yes 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 I think because the thing is this one should be flapped to this this one and this one should be that one that's how it's supposed to be so yeah sorry for that so i'm just going to redo it all over again and let's see if i can save a little bit of time and yeah i think i can save it uh, i can save a little bit of time by selecting all these okay just like we did earlier okay now we just have to uh, deselect all from this side and yeah we can use this active element and we're going to where's the active one okay now what we're gonna do is to snap it let's make it as our active element because that's the most button one and okay now we are going to extrude it and snap it here and that should do the trick yeah that's looking okay it should be here a little bit wrong here Yep, that's looking good. And they're snatched properly, right? Okay, that's good. And let's merge them. Mm. I'm making sure that I didn't make any mistake again. So that's the button. The button will meet... Uh, yeah okay the button 
Yeah, I guess I guess I was right before. I should have moved it here. Yep, that's one. Yeah. So because this is going to be the the this is where the buttons will be and then this will be the buttonholes. And yeah, so let's merge them by distance. Same seven. Okay. First I want to delete all this. Okay. And yep, let's do same thing. Just make it a little bit faster. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Okay. That's good. Let's deselect anything on the left. And active element. Where's the active element? That one. And we're going to move it here. Extrude that. There. Yeah. Mm hmm. Now we're just going to merge to this by distance, seven vertices. And yeah, that's good. Yep. Now what I wonder is Yes, we have to do it with the left one as well. The the right one, I mean. So I'm just gonna pick the same thing and go to vertex mode. Okay, select this, 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 this. Then we're gonna deselect everything on the right. And we're gonna duplicate. Okay, that's okay, that's two. Hmm. Uh huh. That's okay. That's that's yeah. That one two. Mm hmm. So we only have seven vertices selected, and we're going to uh yeah extrude it and snap it here, and now. We are merging uh, all of them by distance, and we we'll remove seven vertices, and that's it. Now, if you check it out, if you go back to object mode uh, and run the cloth simulation, you will see uh, the magic. I hope. And that looks something like that. Mm -hmm. Let's wait until 50, the frame 50. Okay, that's good. And yeah, that's looking good, isn't it? Yeah. With buttons. We've got this uh, gap, this kind of thing, and that's what we want, and that's great. Yeah, we have we have to deal with. If you see, there's a collision, a little bit of going through with the upper part. Uh, that's okay because the, that's that's supposed to be attached to the collar. So, yeah. I think that's that's good for the body mesh right now. Um, yeah, that's good actually. Uh, now the body mesh is done. I think let's do the cuff. Okay, let's first let's turn off uh, the cloth first. So here's the thing. Here's one thing that you may not know. 
the claw simulation, why I turn on and off the claw simulations. And the reason for that is that uh, when you turn it on, even though the mesh is hidden, you will see that actually the simulation works behind the scene because you can see that my FPS is only 2.3. So, um, sorry. So, uh, yes, the simulation is actually working even though you, you hide uh, the meshes with the cloud simulations. So, it doesn't really matter. Uh, however, if you uh, show it, ta-da! It still work behind uh, behind the invisibility, so that's why I always turn off these cloud simulations. So when I run it, now it we got a normal uh, twenty five FPS thing because nothing is running uh, behind, and that's what I want. So let's go to the cuff. Now that's our cuff. And what we're going to do is basically we're going to snap it to the same uh, way like the, the, the arm, the arm mesh. We use this arm measurement as our uh, anchor point. Uh, so we're going to do the same with that. Selection the cursor. And I remember that our arm is rotated through... 33 degrees, so I'm just going to do the same, rotate it 33 degrees, so, yeah, okay, checking in, now, here is the thing, another thing, okay, uh, here's the thing about cuff, is that it's not oriented the same way like the body mesh and the arm mesh, the arm mesh has its stitching on the bottom, right? I mean, like, if we turn this on, you will see that the stitch is here at the bottom. However, the cuff isn't. I mean, like, uh, the cuff should be stitched on the back. It's where this... Uh, slits gonna be uh, meeting so however the cuff should still be folded uh, not stitch at the bottom and top as well and if you want to see what I'm talking about a little bit more clearly let's see let's go to this mm. uh, and yeah, I mean like that is, if you notice that the cuff, this one, they're going to be folded at the top and bottom, but they're going to be stitched, they're going to be buttoned on the back, uh, something like this one, if, if you can see it, here, you will see that the, the slits are on the back of the arm, as well as the, that's where the the cuff is going to be buttoned as well. However, they still fold it at top and bottom. And that's the difference uh, between uh, the cuff and the arm mesh. Okay, uh, let's go back to Blender. Yep. And so, okay. Let's go back to it. And okay. So this is what I'm going to do. Okay because they're going to be folded at top and bottom so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to rotate it along with the local axis around 90 degrees well okay that's kind of hard yep that one or you can just use this one 90 degrees and so that it points uh, so it faces at y axis and now let's bring it forward first okay 
Okay, turn off this thing. We're going to bring it. Okay, let's do global. We're going to bring it. Okay, I think it's better if we use object mode. We're going to bring it this much. Okay, I know that it is going to be so that it kind of uh, align with the arm mesh. Let's hide the, the body mesh at uh, the model until it kind of meets something like that. And okay, I kind of like a round number. So what's that? Okay, that's the Y. Okay, that's the Y. And I like a round number, so this one. And the next, what we're gonna do is we're going to f uh, rotate uh, not the entire thing, but just like all. And we're going to deselect uh, this five, the first five faces. Okay, and we're going to bring up the 3D cursor. I'm going to local, some snapping tool, and we're gonna rotate it that way. Okay, so it's around, it should be 90 degrees. Okay, see, and we're going to deselect again another five. Uh, column of faces we snap this 3d cursor back and we're going to rotate it again 90 degrees okay and okay that looks good so I think I made a mistake not a big one uh, I think it still should be in a, in the same way position okay that's not the idea <laughs> and okay let's just do it manually so it should still be in the middle though so let's move it something like two how much is it 2.5 centimeters that's too much so how much is that Okay, just I'm just gonna use ren until it looks in the middle, and that's okay though. And okay, so next we're just going to bring it down. Okay, it's global 3D cursor and local, and we're going to make sure that it's also in the middle something like that and we can hide the, the arm and we're going to move it backwards until it hits the end of this uh, arm length measurement so that's what I'm gonna do it's gonna hit yep somewhere something like that and Okay, I think we're just going to make it center, yeah, like that, and yeah, that looks good. Now we just have to uh, stitch it, right? So we have to, you know, apply the mirror modifier first. So. We're going to du just duplicate it and apply the the mirror modifier. Uh, okay. Okay, 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 and just hide this for now. Also the measurements, and we're going to connect this part with. Hang on a minute. We're going to connect. Mm, I think. Yeah, no. We're going to connect this part 
and this part I know because this is where the buttons will be so yeah wait I'll have to swing it before I kind of make a mistake like before and mm-hmm mm-hmm Okay, that looks cool. Yeah, okay. I think it's correct. And I'm going to fill this. Sorry, not fill. Uh, bridge, edge loops, uh, only faces. Okay, that's, that looks good, but it kind of overlaps. But let's see how we come up with it. With this uh, shape so okay mm. okay so I think what I'm gonna do now is so we've got uh, a cuff but the thing is we only have the cuff on the left side Normally, we would want two cuffs, right? The left and the right. So, we are going to duplicate it. But first, uh, we have to freeze its uh, everything. Its scale already one. So, we're just going to all transform. So, uh, they have the origin right in the in uh, in the world origin and only then that we can safely use a mirror modifier along x uh, axes and yeah now we have two two cuffs and okay i think now we're just going to have uh start the simulation where is it? Okay, cloth. Okay, so here's another thing about cuff and also color. Uh, they're special because they are usually made uh, stiffer than the rest of the uh, cloth. That's why instead of a normal cotton preset, I'll use the leather preset. I'll set the rest, okay, that's good. I'll set the rest for settings like I have previously done. And let's see where it comes up with, okay. Now let's run the simulation. Let's see what we got. Okay, that's that looks that looks bad because they kind of overlap with each other. So, okay. I think what I'm going to make before this is that I am going to rotate this one using 3D cursor and snap it here now we've got a problem I think because now we have we have kind of a you know apply the transformation uh, our local um, transform orientation doesn't really work anymore so what I'm gonna do is actually use 3d cursor uh, transform orientation so okay as you can see we've got the 3d cursor setting in view 
and you see that it has a location and a rotation so we can just zero it out and to see it better we can just use rotate and see where it is now it's kind of easy because first we know that this the cuff is rotated 33 degrees in its y axis so we just have to put 33 degrees and it already has the right direction now let's go back to the this one to the edit mode and we can now safely rotate this along its x axis okay we use another 15 and we'll do the same with uh, this one okay now that one is forward because that's the top one is going to be in the front and the 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 bottom one will be uh, okay that's that's wrong okay what's happened oh the snapping thing okay just gonna move it that 15 degrees and let's see what we've got now it works kind of swell yep however yeah it looks good actually however i think it's too fast yep and yeah i think that this is what i've talked about that we're going to tweak a little bit uh, let's go back to here and we're going to reduce the max force to something like five and let's see that looks better because the cut the, cu the cuff doesn't really move too much because if you use 20 you see that now the cuff is kind of a sloping now with five it's actually looking good yeah mm, okay now we've got a nice uh, shape and however i'm not really sure that i need all five stitches i think we can do it with only two we can delete the rest let's let's see what we came up with okay let's do the stimulation again and that looks a little bit more natural i guess yeah that looks much better because they don't have this kind of ridge and yep mm. okay that's cool and let's save this to shape keys yeah first wait a minute mm. i think we're gonna have to wait a minute um okay i think we before we apply the shape case uh we have because if we apply the shape case and then yeah because if we apply the shape case and we still have the mirror modifier it's not gonna be a good idea so we have to uh apply the mirror first however we just can and duplicate it so it's safe okay let's run it again uh, apply and we can run the simulation again and 50 and we can save the shape keys now okay good see we've got a nice uh, cuff 
So let's rename this into like uh, cuff shape. Okay, and we're going to add uh, a vertex group. Um, we just have, uh, we're just gonna add all of them, uh, assign it, and call it uh, cuff. Okay, now. Okay, before actually, we're going to, to join this with the body mesh, but before that, uh, we'll have to drag it outwards because as of right now, if we turn on our body mesh, this one, hang on a minute, which one is the correct one? Okay, that this one is the correct one. Uh, as of right now, if you see that the cuff is kind of still buried uh, inside the arm mesh, this one and it's kind of buried inside uh, and we, if we stitch the, the arm and the, the cuff like this it's gonna be bad so here's what i'm gonna do uh what i'm gonna do is to make a new shape key okay let's turn on the body so what i'm gonna do is to make a new shape key and we're going to drag it in edit mode okay we're going to drag it because we already have uh, the cursor uh, in in its place we can safely okay turn off the snapping and we can safely drag it outwards and yeah something like that we have to match first we have to give it we have it to match these, uh, this, something like that, yeah. And then we're going to add uh, another one centimeter, so it has a nice gap to it. And, yeah. Okay, that looks good. Uh, so if you see that we have a nice uh, dragging um, movement, so... We're just gonna call it a uh, cuff uh, drag, okay. Now with this done, actually, wait a minute. Ah, oh, shoot. Mm, yeah, I think it's wrong. I kind of forgot. Okay, let's make a new shape key and, and enter the edit mode. You just have to select this one and then turn on the mirror this thing and if you move it it will mirror that's what i forgot to do and now let's redo it again something like that and then add one centimeters minus one centimeter sorry what's happened there mm. okay what's happening I'm not really sure. Okay, we got it right. And we are going to add another one. Okay, that's good. Let's check. And it has a nice drag right now. And let's call it cuff. Drag. Okay. This. Now, uh, now we can safely join the cuff to the body mesh. And okay, what we're gonna do is we're going to du duplicate the body mesh just to make sure, and then we also have to duplicate the cuff, and then we can safely join them let's join them uh, j it's sorry control j what is the join shortcut for join control j sorry control j and voila 
Now we have one mesh. Okay. And next we are going to uh, stitch this. Uh, sorry. We're going to stitch this uh, edges to that edges. And yeah. However, I don't think that we can use bridge edge loops for this. We're just going to use uh, a good old uh, fill technique for the first time. And yeah, let's do it. So the first edge that you need to stitch is actually this one. It has this one has to go to that one. And then this one, these, these two faces need to stitch together like that. And yes, the rest you can just use F again and again until it fits correctly. The same thing with this. It has to fit there. And then there. Okay. Looking good. And then just click F again and again. One more time. And that's looking good. Yeah. Okay, let's delete it. Delete all its uh, face, only face. Okay, sorry, only face. And yeah, that's looking good. And let's do the other side. Let's check it. Yeah, looking good. And yeah, let's do the other side. Frame selected and this to that and this to this and you can safely do fill again and again. That's okay. This one too. Okay. This one's a little bit crazy, but that's okay as long as it fits to the right uh, edges. That's going to be okay. Okay, only face and okay. Now we've got a nice thing going on. And okay, let's see the drag. Okay. Now. Okay. Come on, where, where were we again? So what are we going to do? Okay, cuff drag. Okay, uh, mm, anyway, we're going to use animation for the cuff drag. Uh, remember that we assign uh, the entire cuff mesh to our vertex group. Uh, that's why we do it because we're going we're going to use these cuff vertex group if we select them. We got our cuffs and we're going to use this faces as our uh, pin group. So yes, let's create an animation. This one is going to be one and at, at frame 50, it's going to be zero. Okay. Let's do, let's run the simulation. Okay. And let's do this. Okay. It's nice. It's slowly going up. Slowly going up, slowly going up. And okay, let's see the back, the back side. And yeah, that, that looks, yes. You see that now we have a crisp cuff because we use it as a pin that slowly goes inside 
until uh, it fits nicely around our wrist. It's one of the, it's one of my observation uh, is that in shirts, when you set the cuff loose, it will actually extend to the base of your thumb. It's only when you mm, try to button the cuff that a bit of the arm fabric is kind of pushed backwards and give you these uh, nice folds around the cuff. Now let's see how it looks like with a uh, subdivision and subdiv and let's turn off the wireframe and let's turn on the light. Okay, that's in the front. Uh, let's move it backwards and yeah that looks that looks what how it should be that's how mm, the shape of my cuffs will look like in real life and yeah now with 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 the cuff being done i think it's time f for us to do the final piece and and that is the the color so let's see our color mesh but before that i think i like how it okay we're just going to turn off this subdivision and then the cloth and turn it back and we're going to turn on the wireframe again and let's hide it for now and let's see our color mesh mm, okay this is our color uh, there's actually only one tiny adjustment that I kind of forgot is that this uh, This thing these edges It's measured at you know at two centimeters Sorry if we can see Where is it? I think we can see shoulder Where is it nah? Okay I think this one um, this thing if you measure with a measure it tool we will notice that this is two centimeters right however it's going to be divided into two edges so we should make it one and one precisely so actually that's what I'm gonna do. Just gonna edit mode and let's uh, first let's duplicate this and and let's hide this one. And we're just going to scale it down until with double G until it hits one centimeter, something like that. And with my color this one I will just use edit mode enter the edit mode and gonna snap we're going to snap it to this one and that's it that's the only adjustment that I kind of forgot and we can, we can just hide the curves again and yeah let's let's go from here um, okay Okay, first thing we're going to separate uh, the color mesh into two. The color base, the red one is going to be the color base, and then the, the cyan one is going to be the color wing. Uh, okay, let's do that, and let's select all. Don't forget these tiny faces, and P, selection. Let's rename them shirt color base and shirt color wing. Okay, the color base already has a nice uh, origin point to it. Uh, however, however, the color because it inherits the the color origin point is kind of the origin point is it's still wrong. So we're going to use this middle thing as its origin sorry okay object set origin 3d cursor 
and we are set so okay now let's see the model and we can turn on our just like what we do with just like what we did with the arm mesh that we use our measurement to place it we can actually use uh, our neck measurement let's hide it we can use our neck measurement uh, as the anchor point you can just select this one and cursor to select it hide it and select both and selection to cursor and they will be in the correct place so okay now let's do with the base first the base needs to be rotated upwards okay something like that the wing have to be rotated downwards like that uh, Okay, but we have to move the wing up a little bit, turn this off, and until it's level with the tip, with these, with these edges, with this, these edges. So I know that uh, the distance between this point to that point is 4 centimeters, so I'm just going to be exact with it, 4 centimeters. Okay, and yeah, we can just, so that they don't overlap, we can just move it back, something like, I don't know, like 5 millimeters, probably. Well, that's too much. 2.5. Yeah, that's good. So, now, here's a little bit of work, okay? We're going to shape the, both the color base and the color wing to follow uh, these, uh, our neck measurement shape. And you may be asking why? Why can't we just shape it like the cuff? You know, like just, just rotate it 90 degrees and whatnot. Well, here's the difference. You see, from our cuff, uh, Blender uh, kind of remembers the original angle of the mesh. So that's why, if you notice, that our cuff, where is the cuff? This cuff. If you notice that uh, Blender maintains that edge, this edge, okay, that's the wrong shape they maintain this is where we fold the edges this is where the the 90 degrees rotation happen and if you check the shape that's where we still got our edges there's still kind of that that fold edge there and that's that's why because blender kind of remembers the you know the angle which you give in the original shape of the mesh so that's what we want for the cuff because uh, if you have a freshly pressed shirt you'll have those edges in the cuff as well however that's not really the case for the color because no one's gonna no one's gonna press the color like we do with the cuff if you see in installs you'll see that the color of the shirts is actually gonna be shaped around a plastic or a cotton or paper uh, let's see let's go to google just so that you can understand what i'm saying let's turn it back boom uh, something like that if you see that the color from the start is uh, going to be shaped as this uh, soft triangle kind of say, uh, shape and that's what we're gonna do with uh, our color mesh okay let's turn off the Firefox okay so that we can s go back to Blender and 
and yeah, uh, that seems like a, a bit of work, but uh, one minute, second, okay. I know that sounds like a bit of work, but uh, I've got a trick to save a bit of time and let's hide the, the wing. Let's do the base first and we're going to use 3D cursor for, for all of this. And this is, uh, here's what I'm gonna do. And just go back to edit mode, uh, face selection, select all. Okay, first I guess turn on the measurements first. Okay, that's okay. Okay, now let's go back to face selection and we're going to use a 3D cursor and we're going to rotate it a little bit so that it's sh shaped around this neck, our neck measurements and we're going to deselect this first uh, row of faces and sorry yep with oh my shortcut turn off and the shortcut for this is actually uh control shift alt okay and left click so but hang on a minute um, okay yeah yeah, control shift alt and left click so that you can select this uh, first column of faces and we're going to snap the 3D cursor back to uh, the next vertex, uh, vertex. And yeah, we can just rotate it again, uh, deselect it, uh, play, replace the 3D cursor and we just can keep doing this so that now there's this one tiny face unselected and we're going to use just control okay and yeah this is, seems a little bit tedious but uh, well yeah, it's okay. That and this is the final one, and there. Okay, now it's it's shaped like it should. We've got this uh, nice triangle, but I think. Uh, this one is still a little bit sharp, so we're going to rotate this a little bit more, okay, and then this part, uh, something like that, before we, yeah, okay, something like that, so that uh, we don't have too much uh, sharp edges because that's kind of important and yeah this looks good and let me check okay and yeah that's it for the shaping uh, we're just going to, to do the same with the the wing the color wing and yeah let's do it so Go to edit mode, face selection, and snap it to the middle. And yeah, we're just going to shape this again. Now you can turn off the measurements because uh, you already have the the color base as the you know reference. And yeah, let's. Just shaping it, this one face unselected. 
okay. Mm -hmm. mm okay. Hmm. Yeah. There's there's going to be uh, a little bit difference between the the base and the the color base and the color wing around the edges and that's kind of okay actually as you can see here in this uh yeah this okay let's turn off it this kind of uh difference between the color base this is the color base and then this is the color wing this is going to be a little bit different because we kind of uh, give the uh, the color wing a little bit of offset, like 2.5 millimeter. So that's kind of a uh, normal because they don't have exactly the same uh, curve, but that's okay. And yeah, now we've got our curve of the color and yeah with this being done I think I'm just going to uh, duplicate them because we're going to uh, apply the mirror modifier so yeah uh, but first I think we're going to we're gonna we're gonna freeze or apply the rotation first uh, yeah now we can safely apply the mirror modifier and yeah okay now we just have to join them okay we're going uh, we're gonna join the wing to the base and control P and S uh, sorry control J and yeah it's it's joined now we just uh have to bridge these edges this uh to that uh, to these edges okay now for this one we can use the the bridge uh loop edge loops and hey something's wrong bridge ah this one shouldn't be included okay bridge edge loops and voila we've got a nice uh, stitches next uh, just like what we did with the button uh, we have to kind of uh, rotate uh, the flap so yeah because let's see our body mesh and as you can see that from our body mesh uh, the left side is the one that's rotated uh, inwards and then the the right side is rotated outwards right so they rotated uh this the left is rotated uh backwards and then the front piece at uh, the right the right piece is rotated uh forward so we're going to do we're going to do the same thing for the color uh now we can just can of rename it just color and yeah we, that's what we're gonna do we are gonna we're gonna rot rotate the left flap to the inside we're gonna we're gonna rotate it backwards so yeah let's do it now to do it oh uh, i think we're gonna use our 3d cursor again with its you know uh cursor orientations because the angle is a little bit 
odd. So, okay, let's freeze. Let's apply the rotation first and turn on the rotate so we can see the its orientation. And yeah, we just have to something. Okay, is it good? Uh, I think no. Twenty six, I guess. Yep, and now we just have to rotate it, uh, the orientation around its x axis until the y is aligned properly, the green one, and it's around 33. Yep, that's looking good. And now we're gonna rotate it backwards and I think 90 degrees not minus 90 degrees is a good number and yeah that's kind of it uh, we don't have to do the the this the, the right side because uh, it's already angled uh, forward so yeah so we're just going to leave uh, this faces uh, alone because it's already you know already angled uh, forward so yeah now okay I think that's good now we just have to bridge these edges with those edges and we can use bridge and only faces. Cool. Mm, okay, now we just have to. First, I think we have to rotate it because as of right now, it's kind of straight. If you see from our model, yeah, now we just have to rotate this downwards. And we can actually use our neck measurement again to copy its rotation. And voila, it's good. And we just have to move it a little bit back because now it overlaps with the body mesh. And yeah, five millimeters. It sounds, it seems good. Yeah, we can hide the model again and then the measurements okay now we just have to uh, turn on our cloth modifier okay just like the cuff we're gonna use the letter preset and then we're gonna set this the same with my default number and yeah Okay, let's see how it looks like. Oh, voila, that's, that's, that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's, that looks like a color, but, uh, mm, I saw a little bit of, yeah. Okay, so this is probably a good example because now it's uh, it's good actually it's already a color and so this is probably a good example to show you a little bit about uh, self collision because uh, as you noticed that the color is built by two meshes and and they kind of uh, located very near each other so we'll see a little bit uh, a little bit more difference when we are tweaking the self collision setting and yeah as of right now it's uh, my default number 2.5 millimeter so let's set it to 1 millimeter and see how does it look like okay 
Now that's that's what I'm talking about. Uh, you will see that because the mesh is kind of very near to each other, if you set the self collision to low, you're gonna end up with this uh, passing through meshes and that's not what we want at all so yeah let's make it let's experiment with two millimeters and see if it's better than 2.5 and well it looks the same i guess let's let's run it to 50 first and yeah, I don't see. Well, I see this. This one spot where it kind of a penetrate, overlap. Okay, let's let's go back to two point five, and let's see if it if it's actually better. Mm, I see a little bit of passing through, but it's just go back to normal. And yeah, I think this this still a sham. <laughs> Maybe just just a little bit of uh, this wrinkle, and I think that's okay for now. And yeah, okay. I want to see two millimeters. How much wrinkle? Well, it. Um, I don't know. I still see that the 2.5 gives me more wrinkles, even though that it gives me this one spot of overlapping, but it gives me a, a better, a cleaner shape. So if you see, sorry, 2.5 millimeters. If you can see it, that if I set it to my default number, 2.5, you will see a lot of this bulging wrinkle, something in here, and in here, and also in here, That's that looks kind of bad. So I think for this one, I'm going to choose 2 millimeter, sorry, and... Yeah, that looks very smooth. And yeah, I'm gonna choose two millimeters. And yeah, let's let's just save the 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 simulation to shape key. And we're gonna call this uh, color shape. And also, just like what we did with the Call uh, the cuff. We're going to assign all of these to a vertex group called color and assign. Okay, that's looking good. So now uh, we just have to join the color to the body mesh, and that's what I'm gonna do. But before that, I think it's a be it's best if if you duplicate it in case you need it later. And yeah, let's click the color and then the body mesh and Control J. Okay. And yeah, we just have to now we just have to stitch with these uh, edges, the neck edges to the color, the, to the base color uh, edges. So yeah, let's do it. But okay, um, I think first what we're gonna do is we are hiding the color wing mesh because it's kind of a uh, in the way. So that it's easier for us to see what we're doing. So let's let's hide it. Yeah. 
and wait a minute what is this Okay, let's hide it. And wait a minute. What is that? Oh, this this tiny faces. Um, that's kind of hard to select. And yeah. Okay, that's cool. Now we just have to stitch the edges and. For this, uh, just like the cuff, it's better to use, it's better for us to use the fill method instead of, you know, the bridge edge loops. So, yeah. So these two edges should be stitched together and you can just use F. But if you will use F again, it will go the, other, the wrong direction because we have this, the stitch, the stitch uh, between the left and the right side of the color. So we just have to select this edge again, and then this edge and fill them. Now from that, we can just use fill until we got all of them stitch. Now, okay, this one, okay, the, the, the left flap, gonna, I'm just going to stitch it with this one. We can use F again, and we can click manually, and here can fill and fill it until all of them are stitched and we go back to we go to the back and yeah for this one you can just keep pressing F and now we can safely delete only faces and now we've got a stitch we got our stitch for the color area and now so here's the thing that we are go we're gonna you know we're gonna use the cuff remember that we have the cuff as our pin group okay uh, well, now we need both the cuffs and the collar as the pin uh, group. So let's create a new vertex group and just gonna call it pin. And we go to edit mode and select the cuff and then the collar, right? We go, we, we're gonna unhide first and we're gonna assign them to new pin group vertex group so yeah if now if we, if we select the pin we've got the color and then the cuffs as our pin so we just have to change this to pin and yeah now we can safely run the simulation. Okay. Nope, I still need to turn on the uh, cloth simulation. And... Okay, that's looking good for now. Wow, that's, that's kind of... That looks magical. To me, at least. And whoa, that's good. 
However, we still got this uh, the ham situation. So let's see what setting we can change. And I think I'm just gonna lower the max sewing force to something like 10. And let's see if it fixes the the ham situation. And yeah, I think that looks better around the the hem. Yeah, it still have a little bit weird shape, but we can just smooth it later. And yeah, if we turn off the wireframe and then we turn on the diff, let's go lighting. And yeah, look, that looks great. And yeah, let's see from the front and okay, that that looks magical to me. <laughs> and yeah, this is the fruit of your labor. And yeah it still has no shader but it looks fantastic and so yeah anyway if you intend to put the as you can see that our color right now is kind of a button so if you intend to put if you intend the shirt to be uh, to be used with uh, ties on, uh, so then this is all you need, uh, and you can just go to the next part. However, it's also I think it's a good idea to make a, an option where the first button, the button on the collar of the shirt, uh, is kind of undone. Because um, that's how I use it all the time. Uh, I don't use ties, so so I like it undone. The first button to be undone. So yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. So let's save it to a shape key, and we can just turn off all this. Uh, other shape keys and you can slide it and yeah you can just call it cloth a uh, shirt uh, color closed okay now what we what I'm gonna do is to open the color and here's how I do it. First, uh, you just can you just click the basis and go to the edit mode. And now you can delete all the these these stitches edges, and you can select these two vertices the top the top vertex of the flaps and then this one too it's opposite and you can extrude it forward okay now let's see from this ah sorry i think i should uh, before I extrude it, you have to change it to our uh, sh latest shape keys first. And from this point on, uh, okay, let's run the simulation again. Oh, no. Can I, I can just do it from 
here you can extrude it forward and you can just scale it along its x axis so that it gets so they so they get wider and okay that seems good and let's call let's assign these two vertices to a new vertex group and assign and let's call it uh, open color and now with that selected let's change the pin group to the open color and let's run the simulation again and that's what i'm talking about okay let's wait until 50 and see if it's what we want okay yeah that's that's how yeah that looks uh, kind of awesome uh, let's put the, the model on and see if it kind of makes sense mm. I think the this uh, pin is kind of too a little bit too forward so I think I'm just going to pull it back a little yep something like one centimeter and run the simulation again okay mm. let's wait until 50 frame 50 Okay, uh, let's see with the sub -lift and then turn off the wireframe and let's, let's turn on the shader, the lighting and yeah, that looks awesome, yeah, <laughs> and that's just like that's how it looks like when, at least in the real life, mm, what a t-shirt with the the first button undone will look like. And yeah, we got a little bit problem with the overlapping here, but I guess that's okay. We can use uh, sculpting later to smooth it out. And yeah. That looks incredible, actually. Yeah. So. Okay. Let's let's save the cloth simulation to a shape key. And turn it off. And now we can call this shirt color open. And let you can see how it looks like. Ta-da! That, that looks great, yeah. Yeah, we've got the cuff nicely done. And yeah, we can smooth it later. And we've got the color done. And okay, I think as a final touch we're gonna we're gonna attach the actual buttons to the shirt so yeah that's that's what i'm gonna do next okay let's okay let's save it first and let's hide it and yeah two uh, okay so i'm not gonna do some fancy buttons so i'm just gonna make 
uh, you know, a simple one. You can you can do uh, if you want. You can make some buttons that you want. So, but I'll just make a, a very basic shape buttons. And first, let's get a slit cylinder. And let's set its dimension. My the dimension for my buttons gonna be uh, one centimeters in both length and width. Sorry. Okay, that's really small, and its width. Uh, it oh sorry, its thickness is around two millimeters, and let's frame select it, and that's that's my uh, button, <laughs> the basic shape of it. So now we just have to just do a little bit of shaping here. Go to edit mode. Uh, select the front face and let's do inset with I. Uh, hang on a minute. Why am I? Okay. With I. Uh, shortcut. And let's set the thickness of it to be another two millimeter and let okay ah okay sorry i think before we do that it's good idea to to apply the scale okay and let's just redo it we can insert it and set the thickness to be two centimeter uh, two millimeters and hang on a minute just checking my obs okay and yeah now we just have to extrude it uh, down to maybe one millimeter so we have a nice shape like this convex shape and yeah, and we have a nice bevel too. So yeah, I think this is my this is my button. A ni nice and simple. Now we just have to rotate it up. So the face, sorry, the front face. This face point to the y axis and we can just uh, apply the rotation okay this is our button button and then we're just going to place this button to the its correct place so now we can Turn on our body, body mesh, and yeah, we just go back to its basic shape, something like that, and so that it's yeah, so that it's showing the basic shape, and yeah, let's place this button to it to the correct place. So the first. Or, the, or rather the second button is gonna be here one two three four five six seven this is where it should be and remember that we have three button stitches the this is this is the, the the right one the left one and then the middle one so we're gonna place the the button here in the middle. Okay, that's kind of hard to see. 
let's frame select it yeah so we've got the right one the left one and the middle so the button is gonna be here in the middle so let's get our cursor and yeah we can go back to object mode we can select our button and we can snap it up okay and okay now we just have to now it's in correct place we just have to rotate it and yeah remember that we rotate the this flap to be you know around 15 degrees so i know exactly how much i should rotate this and that is 50 degree 15 degrees and yeah that seems to be aligning very well now we just have to bring them forward so they don't stick in the middle like that so okay better yet actually let's make the the origin point of our button should be here selection cursor to selection okay now let's make it as our wait a minute yep set origin 3d cursor and then let's okay let's redo this okay now we can that okay now it's it's right in the front of the flaps and yeah so what i did if you wonder what i'm doing what i was doing uh, previously uh, i just kind of uh, change the origin point of my button from the middle of it to this to to the middle of this face and yeah so now we just have to duplicate it let's call this let's you know uh, duplicate it and let's call it button 2 because this is the second button now we just have to uh, remember that we have seven seven button in total so I'm just going to move it down and okay as you see uh, if you remember that uh, my button gap is eight centimeters so I'm just I can be exact with it with the movement with the moving I can just type eight centimeters and they will align properly to its correct place and so yeah so if your button gap is seven you can just move it down uh, seven centimeters but uh, because my gap my button gap is eight I, I just type in a and sorry I forgot to duplicate it okay and we got we're gonna duplicate it until we got uh, seven buttons in total we've got five and now we've got six one more and we are done okay now uh, of course that you can put a uh, button uh, a button on our color but I just don't think that uh, you know it's necessary uh, because you're not gonna see it anyway so 
uh, yeah, I'm just gonna place the buttons around the body mesh and not on the collar. So, yeah. Now, so now we just have to stitch these uh, buttons to the body mesh so that when the body mesh moves around, the button too will follow it. And yeah, to do that, before we do that, I'm gonna rename the buttons to Okay, now, yes, so here's how to do it, how to stitch the buttons to the body mesh, and that is first, select the button, and then select all with A, and then go back to object mode. And then we go to the body mesh and we can we can just hide it and we're gonna select all this vertex this one too and this one so we're selecting uh, three vertices and let's go back to object mode again now we can show the button we can click, we can select the button, we can then select the body mesh, enter the edit mode, and then control P, and make vertex parent. So, yeah, now, if you wonder what I'm, what I was doing, so that's basically attaching the button to the body mesh so if you see if we activate our shape key you will see that our button follow the movement of these three vertices and that's what we want so yeah I'm just gonna repeat the process with other uh, buttons very quickly uh, so I don't bore you to death okay okay Okay, one more and okay now we've done with the all of the buttons now you'll see that uh, the buttons are, are kind of gone from the from the collection because now it's parented to the shirt body and uh, our body mesh and it's now here they're all now here and yeah let's see what happens with them once we activated our shape key and voila they will follow our body mesh uh, deformation 
and that's what we want and yeah okay just like i said we don't have to make the first uh the first button and that is for the color because you know to be honest no one's gonna see it and yeah and because actually from the technical perspective if you notice from our color it has an angled shape like this so it has a this this weird shape already so even if, even if we make a button for it it's not gonna move around nicely so that's why I skip the buttons for the color and yeah now we can now it's kind of finished actually now we just have to just to appreciate what we've done and the fruits of your labor you can just yeah see it for its finished shape and with the model and yeah that's what we've done so far and for me it's looking good okay now yeah now we can if you see that yeah you see a nice looking shirt with a nicely functional fabric topology because all these faces are all squares and as i will explain on the next part uh, this uh, square shirt topology is extremely important when you want to apply a procedural texture to the shirt and yeah and i guess that's it for this part we've done a lot and i hope you understand what i'm saying and have fun with it that's kind of important and yeah see you on the next and final part